Hey everybody, uh, welcome to kind of a sort of unplanned uh, extra sort of bonus episode uh, discussion thing. Uh, originally we were going to be having the next chapter of our Things from the Flood storyline uh, in this uh, release slot, um, but uh, scheduling and uh, things like that uh, sort of went a little bit awry, so rather than go another week without an episode for you, we thought we'd have a sort of um, kind of uh, informal chat about how things from the flood has been going um i've got with me uh dragon hello and eden hello hello um so yeah uh, we really didn't have much of a plan for this so i thought we'd just sort of um as i say just kind of chat about how the game's been going um how what's um what's your guys feeling on this have you, have you been in, enjoying it we haven't really sort of stopped and kind of looked back and sort of gone like how, how are things? <laughs> if that makes sense. But yeah, what's the what, what's the general feeling in the room? I, I, as this is my new kind of, I haven't played this game before. It's sort of interesting to sort of, yeah. How am I doing? Tell me I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm having fun. Yeah, it's, it's it's been enjoyable getting back into a teenage mindset and uh, <laughs> reliving the '90s to some extent, but with, yeah. through the lens of obviously the game. Yeah, bit bit of a different thing to revisit, I suppose. Absolutely. I mean, There's been a lot of teenage angst. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, I've channeled every terrible weenery experience from my uh, teenage <laughs> years directly into this character, as, as you may have gathered. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, um, it's it's been interesting sort of to try and sort of remember back uh, just from like a DMing and like setting standpoint, because um, obviously we're running it in the sort of 90s version of our Call of Cthulhu setting from mm. when was that? In the 30s, wasn't it? 32 or so? I can't remember what year we set it in. Um, Somewhere around that. Yeah, just sort of knocking it forward by 60 years, sort of thing. It's been interesting to sort of go like, okay, so what was the 90s like? What's been going on? <laughs> you know. But then also at the time, I mean, I, I suppose I wasn't really. I, was, I definitely wasn't a teen in the 90s. Um, no. No. So it's kind of putting yourself kind of back in the headspace of that, but also being like, what would it have been like if I actually was a teen in the 90s? Because I wasn't too far off. But um, yeah. yeah. But we were still like properly children. Yeah. And we interacted with things rather than teenagers. So. Yeah. I think I'm that little bit older than I'd possibly both of you. I'm 35. Yeah. I mean, so... I was, I'm, I'm 32. I was born in 87. So hmm. like I say, I, I, was, I didn't turn 10 until we were very nearly. You know, <laughs> very yeah, nearly I've out of the nineties. Tiny, tiny bit more of a glimpse into it in that respect, where I can remember looking at kind of like older kids and longing to be that age in that way that kids do, and kind of looking at what they what they were into and the the stuff that didn't really make sense to me at the time. But I can look back at it now and channel in sort of like, what mm. would I have been like in this era? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not necessarily me, because I'm not as bad as Anthony, or I wasn't as bad as him. <laughs> in, in, in it, like he's he's got all of these instances compounded into a very short period of time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, similar sort of. I mean, like I say, I, I'm t I, I was kind of. I mean, for certain things, I have kind of cast my mind back to sort of stuff we were doing at the time, even though I was younger. Because like the whole kind of rollerblading thing and like the roller disco, like I definitely mm -hmm. went to like a couple of roller discos in a sort of 97 98 and i had mm -hmm. rollerblades and stuff so i was kind of like yeah people were into that weren't they it seemed to be they were into that at the time <laughs> my i mean I, yeah. I barely remember what i did last week let alone what was going on in the 1990s but um yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know for a fact i had rollerblades is that close enough i suppose but <laughs> yeah. i think in my area it was more ice skating right mm -hmm. yeah so but i my balance isn't too bad but no. <laughs> I was just like, I will always fall and injure myself. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm diabolical on it, anything like that. I've been on ice skates one time, almost put my foot in somebody's back. Oof. It was not Ooh. a good time. I, I, it scared the fuck out of me. I, I fell over and, oh, it was terrible. So, yeah, yeah never of, again. Yeah, it's just the thought of, like, if you fall or something and then there's everyone's going around you with these like fucking knives on the bottom of their shoes <laughs> yeah that's a little bit concerning yeah roller disco is at least a little bit safer than that yeah i mean sure. i'm still terrible balance wise like i cannot roller skate or do anything like that like i can ride a bike just about that's more than i can do <laughs> i never learned to ride a bike 
I mean, as a roller disc goes, I've got a very specific memory of me and uh, either two or three guys from my class going to a roller disco at the real life equivalent of what <laughs> Anthony's dad's <laughs> ledger center is. Um, <laughs> and like looking down from an upper balcony and seeing some, uh, like a, a group of people who were like a year or two older than us at our school and going like oh we should chuck stuff at them and i don't remember if we did or not but i just got a weird specific you know <laughs> just a snapshot moment and <laughs> yeah i mean okay well speaking of that then so like um people who maybe didn't listen to our call of cthulhu uh sort of campaign and q a that we did um our setting uh of twine and is very much based in reality of the town that i, <laughs> I live in um mm. I've kind of tweaked some of the names. Well, well, most of the names, actually, to be honest. Um, but they're all kind of like kind of local-based sort of names and stuff. Like the the school around the corner from me is Twynham School. And back in like, I don't know, the 10 hundreds or whatever, the village was called Twynham. And they changed the name to Christchurch. Probably shouldn't be telling people where I live. Fine. <laughs> they can't find me. <laughs> I'm like, sure nobody's coming for you for having nobody cares. these podcasts. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, so it, but it's a very much kind of local thing. So it was sort of, um, it was an interesting exercise to kind of, for the, the Cthulhu thing, kind of go like, right, let's make a 1930s spooky version of this town. And then another one to sort of update it to be almost like now, but also of the spooky version, while still kind of putting in stuff from the real world and stuff was kind of fun. Like, and the Leisure Center was really kind of one of those things because it's, it's a little bit of a focal point. I mean, it's still there now. Mm. Um can't imagine they still do roller discos there, but um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, I know there's a swimming pool and stuff, and there's still like a the gym is still there that I know the roller disco I went to was in, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, like I say it's kind of fun as a setting to sort of be able to like say like okay, where I where I live and where I know, but spooky, you know. Mm. <laughs> and it's got the flavour of the local area, absolutely, mm. but not. But not quite actually it, as you say. Yeah. Like, we haven't got a giant reactor <laughs> on the edge of town. <laughs> it's where the airport is. Like, I just took the airport out and put a reactor core there. But, like, <laughs> you know. It'd be a bit more interesting. I mean, this area is not exa- exactly exciting, I wouldn't say. No, it's, it's all right. Hey, we've got, you know. places around the country. It's certainly exciting in the game. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's pretty exciting here. we got that Alice in Wonderland World of Adventures near the airport. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weirdly specific local be slug. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty going on, you know. Go down town centre, get bottled. Be fine. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> You're really selling it, by the way. I, I think I prefer the day so, you know. for yeah. Twilight Monsi, <laughs> quite frankly. Well, that was the other thing I did in making the map, um, was I kind of took out most of Bournemouth and made it into another small village that's a little bit along the coast rather than just like the big town that's sort of mm-hmm. butted up against my bit but um yeah i think that i don't know how far along people will be in listening to the mm. episodes when they listen to this necessarily um but i think if you still had like a city on the map it would feel really weird yeah. for like the quarantine type situation yeah, that, that I mean, I, I was so kind of much giving, more difficult. I was kind of giving myself the kind of like the isolation in, yeah, you know, like you say, the quarantine thing as like an option, and yeah. um, and just from like a setting standpoint, when we did it as the Cthulhu game, um, and because I was very specific, specifically said this is the same town, you know, we've just mm-hmm. not not just yeah. on by sixty years, like I couldn't imagine that a huge, like just a massive arrived. town had kind of yeah been built like kind of in the intervening sort of not well, not of the style that it is anyway you know so yeah, that, that was kind of yeah. why i kind of just changed it to like a sort of small village so maybe i could sort of plausibly like <laughs> this things nobody thinks about me in my setting for a podcast game of call of cthulhu <laughs> things from the flood but like plausibly like in the call of cthulhu time there was like a, a small like a small grouping of like houses Mm-hmm. Where the center? What did I call it? Uh, was it Maricon Sea or something? Yeah, I, I think that's right. That yeah, sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. So, like, conceivably, in the Call of Cthulhu time, there was like a small fishing village there or something along the coast, but like not big enough for me to mention in the mm-hmm. Cthulhu game. And like, that's just expanded a bit, you know. Yeah. But um, a whole big town. No. Um, yeah, it makes sense for the loop facility to be away from 
a densely populated area anyway. I mean, I don't know that much about the actual setting. Like, I've not read the core book or anything. Like, you tell me. It, it, are there loops that are close to cities? Do you know? Yeah, I mean, the the, the core book comes the, with the two... The original one is, I yeah. think. Yeah. Like, um, there's one in North America. Yeah, I think it's I Boulder, think I think. And there's, like, yeah. towns within the re- accelerator loop sort of thing. Within the reactor mm-hmm. area, yeah. Um, and the other one is in, I think it's in Sweden, and again, it's sort of like on a sort of that one's more like on an island, I think. Yeah, um, um, yeah, because parts of Sweden are like, like a massive number of small islands that are all really close to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have it like on one of the islands that's a wee bit further away. Yeah, but there's again, okay. it does the the loop bit kind of is crossing over. I don't know whether it's meant to be underwater. Mm-hmm. I haven't. Had, it's been a little while since I've read that part of the core the core book. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's say we, it, I'm, I, I didn't so really big. want it to be sort of, you know, going through the town, let's say, though. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but, but also like the the loop reactors, are they cover such a big area, they're going to have to be near people at some point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so... that was also sort of my thinking is that they built it sort of, um, you know, the, the town itself, as we described it in Call of Cthulhu, is a little bit isolated even though it's sort of down on the south coast, you know, like it hasn't got like, it's not like it's right not on the edge of a city or something. Yeah. So it is a little bit out of the way, but they also are going to need people to work there. So that's maybe why they built it where they built it. Mm-hmm. Sort of thinking. Plus it was a good, just a convenient spot to be like, well, I'll take the airport out and put, <laughs> and put that there. Um, this is the, the other flip side of <laughs> making a setting basically based on a real place is I can just take the actual Google earth map and just be like, Okay, I will just draw over these streets and put some color blocks in, and there we go, you know, um, and it will look fairly good. Um, well, at least I think it looks okay. It doesn't. Yeah, it does. I I love the fact that it because it definitely has the feel of a real place because it is. Mm. Like, um, it's really it can be quite difficult to get the feel of a town or the feel of a city. Mm-hmm. from scratch and have it actually feel like it's somewhere that people would live yeah i mean because yeah. you're starting from scratch you kind of tend to forget little bits and pieces like i say i mean yeah if i if i was starting from scratch i probably wouldn't have thought of a leisure center um yeah but just the fact that it was based on a you know <laughs> it's based on where i live and there's definitely a leisure center there because it's like a 15 minute I'm, i don't want to i was gonna say 15 minute walk from my house um that doesn't narrow down too much where i live yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not that big yeah. a town. it's You're not fine. that big a town no um in real life actually it is a fair amount bigger than what i've put on the map if people want to see the map they can join our discord server <laughs> there we go just shoehorning in another um invite to the discord um yeah come and say hello Good. yeah come, come and hang out and look at all these maps and things but um I should probably tweet them out as well, anyway, just for those who don't use Discord. But um, <laughs> <laughs> we're not like it's not, well, people don't pay to get on it. I'm not like paywalling it behind promote the Patreon. Promote yourself, post or AG. Yeah. God damn it! Yeah. Promote yourself. I'm not good at stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, you are good at stuff. <laughs> what are you see? saying? I'm not good at promoting stuff. <laughs> um, I know yeah. that's why I put up the YouTube link for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> But yes, I need to get better at tweeting out links and things. <laughs> now I'm on record. Now I'm on record as saying that I I need to get better because yeah, <laughs> now it's official. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. back to yeah. things in the flood then. So um, indeed. I mean, well, uh, just, just just out of anything, what were the two of you like kind of um, expecting going into the game? Because I know none of us had played it beforehand, really. Um, I know Tales from the Loop had been out for a while, but I think when I sort of proposed this. The actual things from the flood kind of version hadn't quite been yeah, sort of released yet. Was... Yeah, yeah. Um, I've really been enjoying it. Um, I like the feel of it. It's quite different to a lot of the other games I'm playing at the moment. Mm. Um, which is nice. Yeah, <laughs> it would change I your like... pace. Yeah, I like that it's teenagers as well. Mm. Like you're not like none of you get to play as like oh this is the the seasoned veteran of this kind of career. <laughs> like, nope, you've got no idea what you're doing. Yeah. Make it up and go along. 
as much as we have been quite authoritative, I, I like. I feel like I mean, my character's not so much, and and that's very much in keeping with the fact that it's like he's a teenager. These are scientists and soldiers and people that like even any of the adults. He he really shouldn't try it on with them for the most part. And yeah, I stick to that. And then and yeah, Hazel the- and Soda are just like, no. Answer me right the fuck now. <laughs> That's it. You're striving to be mature, and my character's like, no, I'm, I'm still a child. <laughs> oh, no, they're not even striving to be mature. They're just really stroppy. <laughs> <laughs> I think Either the whole way. teenage thing has kind of added a whole extra element for it as well. Um, just because we've, I think, a good amount, a good amount of the fun has been in the teenage awkwardness that we yeah. maybe wouldn't get in other games because we've all been sort of forced to be like right you're a teenager rather yeah. than sort of it, say we were playing D or something you know you can make the choice that i'm playing a teenager but it's not really a sort of core story component if that makes sense it almost feels a bit weird like if like everyone else is like oh you've got this person who makes their living doing this and this that and the other and oh this person's a teenager yeah but, mm. why what what's going on yeah it feels I really like it. I've been enjoying it quite a lot. Mm. I think that adds like I say, it adds a kind of extra dimension to it as well, is that Yeah. You know as you say, you're kind of running into the whole like Anthony's <laughs> not maybe thinking of himself as too mature and stuff and is like maybe a little bit clueless about certain things, shall we say? <laughs> say the least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is sort of again, it's another way of informing I, I'm I'm really enjoying the way that you you know, you guys are letting it kind of inform your sort of actions as well and that mm-hmm. i mean even on the, the flip side of like you know i've been enjoying like the awkwardness between um sora and anthony but also like the kind of um the uh the sort of hazel feeling like she's you know you know her mum is sort of glued to the tv a lot of the time and she's having to take care of her sister this point. yeah and she's just like really freaked out and like okay well there's no one else that's going to do it so I'll, I'll have to yeah yeah and but like it really is not but again it, it's coming across in like a real sort of um i think a real kind of honest way of like you've still i can feel like the tension in the like hazel's having to grow up a bit quickly to do that sort yeah. of thing if you know what i mean um, yeah yeah it's definitely going to have an an impact on her mm. um and like the 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 storming in and screaming at the scientists yeah. <laughs> is like it's the frustration that She's having to do all these things that she shouldn't actually be having to do. Mm. Why are all the adults doing this and putting them in this situation? And ah, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've actually Classic teenage angst. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, just a different kind. <laughs> well, as the GM as well, I've been kind of enjoying that. Like, it was a little bit. It's kind of unplanned as well. The fact that like all the adults are fairly, <laughs> fairly useless and stuff. But it's been, you know, it's been kind of. Um, it's been kind of interesting to play like the other side of that, whereas the three of you are each, you know, kind of capable in your own ways and independent from, you know, or not sometimes in the case of Anthony <laughs> from the whole parental sort of um, side of things. Um, mm-hmm. But playing like the counterparts to that's been kind of interesting to sort of have the the sort of what the flip side of the story is. So like Hazel's having to take care of her sister and stuff because her mum, you know, isn't really pulling the weight, shall we say. Yeah, she's um, just completely checked out. But playing it as the NPC side of things of like, what what would the mum be doing instead? I think yeah. it's been quite interesting. And again, sort of, I mean, uh, Lex is not on for me to sort of really sort of dive into the depths of what her, um, yeah, the relationship with uh, like Sora's relationship to her mum and sort of what's going on there and things. But that's been interesting as well to kind of play the counterpart to sort of the angry teenage daughter and the mum trying to reconnect sort of thing mm. that's that's been you know it's been an interesting yeah. sort of thing and plus and then i have the fun thing of like i have to come up with fun stuff around to his dad to shout at him oh of course <laughs> <laughs> oh poor yeah, anthony <laughs> there's just a, i've aimed for tragic humor and yeah, yeah and you've delivered beautifully in the way that you've like we've played off of each other with that stuff <laughs> <laughs> look having a dad with <laughs> maybe a certain view in mind of what his son should be like is um yeah let's just say <laughs> oh yeah I, i've experienced uh, it so i yeah. can channel some of that as well and it's, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, 
I think quite a few people can probably empathize quite strongly yeah that's it i, I think that's all it. of all of the characters have got quite a realistic relationship with their families but each of them facing a different flavor of it as it were yeah yeah and i so that's, that's that's kind of what i'm i'm sort of yeah i mean that that's really sort of surprised me because that wasn't something planned going in really mm. um because i mean well, even like, all as... we knew was that for some reason the adults weren't stepping up as much as the situation might suggest mm. so and we all came up with totally different ways for that to happen yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i think it, and it, it but it's kind of come through in sort of different ways like i said i mean hazel's mum is sort of you know um like you say glue to her tv a little bit um but we haven't really stepped up you know like d d dived into sort of what what you know what's going on with hazel's dad or whatever you know mm. Where did where did he go or anything on how long has he been gone sort of thing? I mean, I know we've yeah. um, it's been mentioned that Sora's dad died, um, mm -hmm. but then yeah, so it's, it's interesting that it's sort of like there's a couple of different sort of there's a different flavour with each of you, which I'm I'm kind of enjoying. Like Anthony's parents are both there, but his dad's got very high expectations, but doesn't listen. It's sort of yeah. like a different way to you know. Whereas They're overbearing. It, it almost yeah. feels like Hazel's mum hasn't got a lot of expectations for what Hazel could be doing, but Hazel herself has realised that there are things that she should be doing, you know, that her yeah. mum should be doing, that she's having to do, sort of thing. Mm. It's almost like a little bit of a flip side of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading more into it than there, but I don't know. Or I'm just it's, <laughs> in this essay. I will put forward my. Uh, <laughs> I think that that's all there. Yeah, yeah it's been interesting that it came together organically, as you say. Well, yeah, again, like I say, none of it planned. I mean, I said this off off mic, but basically, this is another case of I'm running a campaign um, based on an A5 sheet of paper <laughs> with some notes on it. So, I mean, stuff like in depth family dynamics definitely wasn't pre planned. So, I'm, I'm quite mm -hmm. interested just sort of how it's turned out and and how it's going to turn out as well. You know, because time of recording this, we are we are not finished with this. Um, story so uh yeah like getting there it's yeah um, up. but then we we had a couple of sort of twists and things drop in the last um in the last episode as well so I'm, I'm interested to see sort of how they end up going i mean i've i've got my i've got my plans and ideas sort of thing but obviously a, a whole well that's kind of been the case for a lot of stuff a whole of the um sort of flavor of this game is 100 percent sort of going where you guys want to go with it if you know what i mean mm -hmm. So, I, I'm I'm keeping myself open for um, things to not go <laughs> the way I'm sort of thinking they might, or you know, it's it's 100 percent up dependent on what you guys do in response to the stuff I have planned as well, you know. And I, I say that that kind of extent to sort of what's going to be said to parents and things, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite intrigued to see what will happen next in the story mm. just because of how we finished last time mm -hmm. it's just like ah yeah. <laughs> well i'm a big fan of um cliffhanger endings as you know um mm -hmm. and um i really that that was a sort of um again that, that 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 moment was kind of not really not as as it went down pre-planned but um, I mean, we should have said at the stop. <laughs> we should have said at the start. Spoilers if you haven't listened to the last episode. Um, we could say it now. Okay, if you haven't listened to the last episode, keep your ears closed for a couple of minutes. Um, are you ready? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, um, yeah. I mean, as as it went down, like obviously, the whole sort of back end of the last episode was the traveling to Anthony's house and traveling to. Sora's house to sort of figure out, you know, rescue families, but also I kind of I don't know how well it came across really because you know sometimes I feel like I'm too close to it with the editing of um, how uh, how should I say? Like I wanted to keep like a a sort of layer of tension there that like you didn't know when you went to the houses like whether people were going to be infected or not mm. and stuff. Um, so it was sort of um, yeah, and I, I don't think I kind of knew like knew knew right up until there's a little bit of peek behind the curtain right up until um we i was kind of we were actually recording that bit whether sora's mum was going to be infected or not 
I had a few different ways in my head that I was sort of like, I could go one way or I could go another. And then it was just kind of in the moment, like what fits and stuff. That isn't to say I didn't have bits planned and that. I didn't change it last minute, but I had a couple of options mm-hmm. as well. So, but yeah, that's that season, season the opportunities in those moments. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Seeing that, those avenues you can go down that bit at the end where I'd like, I, I could hear it on the recording where <laughs> we were sort of, um, Anthony was very careful to sort of not say, I mean, it was still, it, it was like borderline, but like you were, you were quite careful to like not say anything about there being a quarantine and stuff right up until your parents were scanned. Mm-hmm. And then, um, Sora's mum walks up and, <laughs> and Sora immediately starts going, Oh, it's a quarantine. Everyone's sick and stuff. <laughs> and, t- and I was like, you're saying exactly the things that I told you not to say. This is perfect. <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's uh, yeah, I think that worked out kind of kind of well, sort of thing. So um, yeah, uh, but and obviously we had the, the cliffhanger ending with gunfire and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, and still at, at the time, yeah, you know, I mean, I know what happened, but I mean, yeah, you guys still That's waiting? Foreboding. So, yeah, foreboding. What will happen next time on that? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, how how, how about um, sort of. Storyline wise, I mean, I don't want to sort of get into sort of um, what your sort of predictions or thoughts or anything were at, but like, yeah, I mean, I've I've been kind of um, interested to sort of see how the um, the kind of mood of it's coming across. Really, I mean, it's a bit of a balancing act on my side of it, and sort of not wanting to go like super dark with mm-hmm. stuff, but also kind of having the sort of um, you know, you've got to have a bit of the kind of horror elements in it a little bit, but I'm kind of balancing, you know, the plot, which, you know, is one thing with wanting to have the fun teen moments as well, because that's like the two halves of the game, really, you know. Yeah, um, I, I think there's been a good steady build of character moments and the, as you say, spooky moments and the actual plot progression. Hmm. That we kind of started off and it was very teenagery and we we focused on a lot of that to begin with. And slowly but surely, the oddities and the strangeness has sort of welled up, and now we're right at the core of it. Mm, and yeah, yeah, something's about to happen. Well, I feel as well like um, I, I've been dropping a lot of sort of um, things happening, if that makes sense. Like right from the beginning, um, that I don't know if all of them have been picked up on or whether they all have, and I'm not as subtle as I think I am. Um, but I'm, I've also, it's, it, yeah, it's a bit of a balancing act of trying to put stuff in that's going to serve the plot, but maybe only in hindsight, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. I haven't really got a question there. <laughs> just sort of like, oh yeah, we'll have just to see a, where that goes. Yeah. Um, but also as well, I kind of feel like I've, even though you've had like a, I, I felt like it was a bit of an exposition dump when I was saying it <laughs> from the professor and that. I do feel like there's still, you know, there's definitely not the full story has come out because I, you know, it is sort of an in-character thing of like that's what he thinks is going on, mm-hmm. sort of thing. So yeah, I feel like yeah, I don't want to say too much because we haven't finished it yet. I know, thing. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think Hazel Hazel's probably still going to be pretty suspicious, mm. not least because they've got no idea really about the blood, no, or about how this black goo could have been on the windowsill mm. without a host. I think yeah, I think the idea that's was put forward that maybe somebody put it there but it was just like a maybe mm. that's what it because we don't think it could climb the side of a building. Yeah. Sort of thing. Um, but that, I, mean, I mean, trust me, that that was intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not a, <laughs> it's not a plot hole. Mm-hmm. I don't want any cinema sin style <laughs> listeners going on. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, it'll, look, make, it'll make sense somehow. We yeah. just don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Trust ah. me. I, le- I leave my share of plot holes. I'm fully aware of <laughs> how <laughs> how plot holy some of my stuff can be. But um, yeah, I've got a fairly tight rein on what's going on with um, the the blood and things. I mean, that was interesting anyway because that that was an element that you you brought into the sort of um, into the story as like an extra sort of. Um, not an extra, but you know what I mean, as, you, you, as Hazel's own kind of extra sort of... I keep using the word extra. I don't mean extra. Hazel's own sort of weirdness thing that she's yeah. got going on, sort of separate from, you know, sort of um, 
not separate, separate from the main from... thing. I, I don't want to imply that. I just mean like it, it's not well, happening to the other two, if that makes sense. Yeah, and like it feels like it's been building up gradually, whereas the other stuff is kind of just hit. Mm. Yeah. I think it's added an extra sort of layer of um layer of uncertainty, if that makes sense, which yeah. I think has been quite good for sort of um I mean our listeners I hope will agree with me that it's it's been good for um sort of adding a bit of a sort of texture to the um to the kind of world that like you know, it's not just the one thing mm-hmm. maybe that's been kind of, you know, it's not like it's not just the main the, the goo isn't the only thing that's happening in town sort of thing, mm. and they may or may not be connected. I think I it helps of, with the debt. Hmm. I, I kind of like to think of it in terms of, um, obviously this is Twilight Mon C, so the Call of Cthulhu thing happened here, so this could be some echo, some remnant, something possibly related. Things have happened here before, so yeah, I mean, it, that, all, it kind of fits the setting beautifully. That, that was kind of a, a thought I had in mind anyway, just in terms when I was, before we'd even started, that I was like, well, we're moving it, we, we, it's the, it is the same setting, we're just moving forward in time, and there was weirdness here before, and there was, I even had weirdness that you guys didn't discover in the Call of Cthulhu one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the, again, also in that one, wasn't really that far related to the you know, you didn't miss a giant clue. Let's put it that way. I just uh, was going to have sort of. I, I think the, more that the idea was like this town has a lot of odd stuff happening. Mm-hmm. If that happens, and a lot of it is interconnected and stuff, but may not seem so on first glance and, and things. And yeah. No, I think it's worked really well for yeah. that. Um, I know when we did Call of Penance, there was at least one thing in there which. There was zero explanation of. It was just completely random. That was the one Bell rewrote, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm not surprised <laughs> that there was some randomness in there, let's just say. Yeah. 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 It's very fitting for him. But yeah, there was just like this massive element that took up like nearly a full e- one of the six episodes that had nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I mean,. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I'm all for red herrings and things. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't mind a loose plot thread here and there. Yeah, and, and I'm not even. I don't, don't take this to imply that you know the blood thing isn't connected or anything like that. I don't want to put that thought out there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like I like the idea. Like, um, well, it's yeah, this, I'm doing my normal thing of like jumping from thought to thought, but it's like it's like the. Um, like, let's say you're playing like a big role playing game, like a uh, like a uh, video game. Mm-hmm. It feels so much. The world feels so much bigger with side quests and just sort of weird areas and stuff than if you were walking down a corridor. Does yeah. that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I'm all for like in the setting, sort of putting in extra stuff, and um, you know, some of it might be in relation to what's going on with the main storyline. Some of it might be integral to the storyline and you might not stumble across it sort of thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. Just the idea of like, okay, let's expand the setting and the players might not see it all, but it is there sort of thing. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it works especially well as this is a, a continued setting. Mm. Well, that was the whole, yeah, thinking behind it really i mean and just the fact i think it works with this game as well of like because you're you're just playing teenagers who you know you're at the you go to the local school and stuff you're not like as you said earlier you're not like the head of police and the mayor and you know yeah and uh, like an, an ambulance driver or something you know you're you're just some teenagers who to be honest have spent most of their time you know, talking to each other about teenage stuff, really. You've been doing the investigation, yeah. but like there's been you gone you took a whole evening out to go to a roller disco. Um <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um <laughs> We're not exactly dedicated investigators. Well, exactly. And but like you're not gonna be aware of like everything that goes on in town as it happens. You're gonna yeah. have your quite narrow I mean this is as a good thing. This isn't like a this is I don't consider this a hindrance. It's if anything it helps with the you know give a certain specific sort of style of storytelling um mm-hmm. i guess similar to sort of like like how buffy was like you know 
this town must be bigger than what they're seeing sort of thing mm. you guys yeah. are seeing your bit of it and mm. um yeah whereas mr butler the monkman is seeing a completely different part of <laughs> he's seeing a completely <laughs> different story in the town um so yeah yeah i don't know i think it all goes to help make the setting sort of feel a little bit bigger and that and um yeah, I'm not going to go... I don't think I'm going to go as far as like building a World Anvil page for the setting or anything. I think it's just a fun thing to maybe come back to occasionally when we're playing. Like, mm -hmm. say, oh, we want to do another thing from the Flood game or like, oh, we want to do another, you know, Cthulhu game. Um, I'm, I'm just imagining, like, not that it's likely to happen because the rule set was so horrendous, but Shadow Rush. Oh, God. <laughs> so, <laughs> the the, the fun of trying to come up with what's Twine and 1C in the Shadow Run. Twine and 1C, 2199. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like shaman and people that are drawn there because there's some kind of like spiritual connection there's there's something going on oh no that totally works <laughs> it's the last resting place of a digital god <laughs> Drown. Yeah, they found a way to summon it through technology yeah and they, they did it in the burnt out husk of the um leisure center <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, but yeah, that that whole idea of like, hey, here's the setting, we can play multiple different games in it. Um, you know, we could even come back as a, like as a different group and be like, hey, here's more things from the flood, but like it's a different group of teens or something, and um, mm -hmm. you know, set it at a different point in the '90s or something. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I yeah, treat it like Resident Evil Two and Resident Evil Three, where it's kind of happening at the same time. Yeah, exactly. But that might yeah. get complicated, but that would be a fun way of doing it. It would. Um, that is gonna. That would be a hell of an editing thing for me to do, or at least uh, you know, a DMing side of things where I have to be like, okay, yeah, well, figuring out a way of getting key events to cross over. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, it would be sort of like I'd have to keep track of what day of the week it was and what the date was. I mean, that's mm. something I've maybe gone a bit too far in depth with with, with the editing, and that was looking up specifically what was on TV you know, <laughs> yeah. on that actual day in the 90s so that the right TV program was on in the background when you guys walked into the house and stuff. It was a bit... I mean, I had too much time on my hands at that point. <laughs> That's the level of dedication. That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Listen would... to that. That's it's crazy. Nobody would but ever know. at the know. same time, it's such a brilliant touch. Like, I, I think it's really great. Like, I, I've really enjoyed listening to like and, and catching those bits of catchphrase or wh whatever it was. Is it catchphrase? I think I had, them, um, like... yeah, one of them I had, uh, what was that called? Small Talk, with hosted by Ronnie Corbett. I never saw that. You never yeah. saw it. Yeah, it's, it was a weird show that I'd, right I'd forgotten about for 20 years, and then uh, I had to go to the hospital with my mum a year ago. So I was sitting in the waiting room, and it was like on in the hospital waiting room on the TV, and I was like, immediately, I'd forgotten about it for 20 years, and now I just like, I saw it, I was like, Oh god, this! <laughs> the, the general gist of it seemed to be that like Ronnie Corbett is the host, and it's like a game show, and there's people are like, seem have to guess what a, they had a, like a bunch of like pre-taped answers to questions by like uh, primary school children, mm -hmm. and like the contestants had were kind of like having to guess what the the answers were going to be, I think. I might be 100% okay. wrong. I was only kind of partly like watching it. It was like the funniest things or whatever. It was, no, it wasn't quite like that. It was more that... It, it had that to it, but like it was an actual game show sort mm -hmm. of thing. So like there was a winner, and I think they won like a probably like a cheap holiday to some like two-star bed and breakfast somewhere. <laughs> so I might be completely <laughs> wrong. It might have been like the biggest show on television. But... Um... <laughs> this is a, it's a deep cut on yeah, the, the, it was all about the deep cut. British TV. And I, I think on one of them... Um... Yeah, no, definitely on one of these episodes where I think it was where Hazel came downstairs on the Saturday morning and her sister was watching TV. Um, mm -hmm. I found the exact episode of the exact cartoon that would have been on at that time and had it playing in the background. It's only like 20 seconds of audio and it's like deep in the mix. Um, <laughs> it's probably completely lost when... <laughs> it's probably completely lost when I flattened the MP3 down to 128 kilobit. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's the kind of like, oh yeah, this is, this this is just for me. No one's gonna know I've done this. Sort of thing. <laughs> well, they don't now. Yeah, now they do. Yeah. Where's my props? I, just, I immediately get sued by the BBC for use of small talk yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. No, I don't know. That's the kind of like, I don't, that that's that that's how I amuse myself when I'm editing. Is like, let's find a weird thing to put in there. Um, 
you, like really you early on. Something to help with editing because it can be so grim. I yeah, I don't find it too bad. It's more um, it's more when I'm on a crunch than anything else. Like I have fun with if I've got like like if I'm if we're recording like several weeks in advance, which we aren't always. Then I've got time to be like, okay, I'll take my time on this. I'll do like an hour here, then I'll go off and watch, you know, watch a movie or something, and come back and like, I'll, I'll, you know, if I'm starting to feel the pressure, I'll just stop and walk off and do something else. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, when we're on a like super crunch time, um, then it's uh, yeah, then it's a bit of like, okay, just get it done, slap some sound effects on. I generally at that point don't have time to write new music. Um, I feel like I maybe haven't written new music for the last couple of episodes of, <laughs> of things in the flood but um yeah it's i've got a bit of a backlog now of music from various different story arcs that we've done that i can generally make fit to different scenes mm-hmm. which is good but um yeah i don't know yeah, i think the podcast having your original music anyway is is quite something yeah so, definitely it's all incredibly fitting like i, I really love it it's it's good stuff Oh, cheers. Yeah. I'm not here for the compliments. <laughs> As you know, I'm, I'm bad, I'm bad at taking because compliments. Because I know what you're things. like. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it, I, I like as an extra layer and that, but if I don't have time, I'm, I just don't have time. The kind of thing. But I do like writing more music for it because um, I get to put out a new album at the end of every year on my band camp of like, hey, here's all the music that we did this year. Which is fun, but um, that's another thing I never send people the link to, so uh, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. That's you know, well, if you what, go digging what should they search my... for on Bank- Bandcamp? Just pretending with dice? Uh, no, I mean, it, oh, it might turn up on there on Bandcamp um, if you search that, but uh, it's on it's because again, it's on my personal page, like the YouTube one. Um, mm-hmm. It's Adam Johnston UK dot Bandcamp dot com. Um, yeah, and all the soundtracks are on there. Yeah. I've done so far, yeah. Free to download, or you can give me money if you want, but not you specifically. I mean, you can. But, um... <laughs> I'm, I'm broke as hell, so yeah. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to tell you. That's no, fair. Um, <laughs> I've got a feeling, even when we've got, like, like we will, like, we don't always have all of the pretending with dice links mm. for the plummet episodes you're in, but I'm sure for the Halloween ones, we try and put in all of the links. Yeah, oh, that and is I appreciated. don't think you have ever given us the Bandcamp one. No, because <laughs> it generally gets tweeted once per year when I put the new album up. And I retweet it, and that's that's about it. Um, I'm going to go and find it, okay, and then it's going to get tweeted. Yay! <laughs> because I will do promotion even if you won't. <laughs> No, I occasionally cool. get people listening on that on, on it, but um, yeah, occasional downloads and things. But I've, and I've got like an album on there of like a bunch of my YouTube um, TV covers and things, and and my actual albums are on there of like Fairness. real music from, <laughs> from the first Halloween project, so 2018. You mm. did actually give us your YouTube. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's a rarity. <laughs> um. But kind yeah, of anyway, I had to track you down. Yeah, be like you need to give us this. Um, but yeah, before we get too off track again, um, so yeah, any any extra thoughts to share on th- things? Um, things for the flow. I don't know. Oh, okay, well, uh, maybe this is an interesting thing as we've got more of it to come. Um, what do you guys think's going on in the town? <laughs> and I will neither confirm nor deny anything. By the way, I'm just uh, you know. Uh, I, I'm under the suspicion that the loop has summoned something or has possibly opened a gateway Half-Life style and let things in, whatever these <laughs> okay. things are or whatever they're doing, I don't know, but it, it kind of feels like maybe that's what's going on. Funnily enough, I actually uh, referenced the Half-Life Resonance Cascade event on a recent Plummet episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's in mind then. <laughs> I'm not. I'm neither confirming nor denying that at all. Yeah, <laughs> just saying about that. Oh, okay, that's an interesting theory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's my thought. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, yeah, I'm wondering where, if it is, like, a parasite. How the hell did it turn up? Like, my suspicion is that yes, it's come through the loop from somewhere hmm. but no idea 
what sort of place that somewhere would be. Mm. Um, and I think Hazel's just really freaked out at the moment. Yeah. Because something went really weird. I was like, oh, okay, other people know about this one. Mm. That's not so bad. And then it was just the hit of all oh, this thing that's been scaring me for the last couple of years. Nobody has any idea about it. Yeah, they didn't know anything about that. They knew about the other thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, if anything, she's possibly more freaked out by <laughs> the blood again because people are dealing with the black goo. Do you think you'd kind for- of built it up that she thought she was going to be getting an explanation when she broke into the base? Yeah, 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 I think she was she was really hopeful. Um and yeah, just kind of at the end of her tether with trying to deal with all of it on her own. Mm. And yeah, obviously yeah. a bit of a curveball that they are like, Wait, what's going on in your house? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, Oh no, your family aren't infected. However like, Ah, <laughs> Like, hey, we know you're not infected, but wait, what did you say is going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I kind of, um, yeah, that was something I thought, again, that does, I, I, we're kind of doing this, this is almost like a post-mortem before we're finished, really, isn't it? But um, that was, yeah, I thought that would be an interesting thing to throw at you. Mm-hmm. Um, in that, the, you know, the, they definitely, in the, in the facility, had some clue of what's happening in the town, um, but you've just thrown, uh, pardon the pump, you've thrown them for a loop. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, um, and it was a sort of mad scramble to come up with an acronym for another department that they were like, hmm, maybe we should refer it to these people, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll see what comes of that as well, because um, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, it just again, all we, feels don't... really weird and ah, mm. <laughs> or her at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. It's been a few episodes. I kind of. Um, so you had the sort of odd apparitions on the ceiling and stuff as well in like patterns as well that I kind of yeah. Well, I wonder kind of what you make of that to be honest, actually. But I, I don't know whether to wait until we're um... yeah. Um, it's mostly for Hazel. It feels as though this stuff had been like moving up towards her head, look like, up towards her head and her face, and then it stopped. And it's almost like um, so you know how like like the trope of having something gradually ratcheting up and then it completes the first section and then it needs to move slightly over and do the same. Mm. So it almost feels like something about with this happening with her is locked in place and now it's just going through the steps with her little sister Mm. Mm -hmm. and that something might happen when it gets to the same point. Interesting. Yeah. Again, neither confirming nor denying. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. I kind of really don't. Yeah, this is the thing. I don't. I, I, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts when we're done. Basically, let's put it that way. I, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to put any thoughts out there in case. Um, yeah, I give away. You don't want to spoil the surprise. Well, that too. But I also don't want it um, to put something out and sort of put like a thought in your head as like, oh, it's this way by accidentally saying something on this you know what i mean yeah yeah so um yeah well, that's fine um well we're at about 50 minutes um did we have any extra hey do you guys have any any uh, uh can't talk not gonna edit this out <laughs> you guys have any <laughs> extra thoughts you want to add really before we sort of wrap up this sort of impromptu sort of i don't know what would you call it? it's not q a um random discussion <laughs> um, Behind the scenes. yeah yeah i guess so um, no, nothing particularly that I need to add at this point. No, it's just, just enjoying it so far, and I'm looking forward to the conclusion. Cool. Yep. I want to, I want to find out what the mystery, what's going on behind as many of the mysteries as possible. Um, and it will be interesting. And I'm quite looking forward to seeing how all three of the teenagers react once they find out more. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'm. Yeah. I'm also very interested in that as well. Like I say, because I've got, 
it, again, in a non-spoilery way, I had, th- let's just say there's a few different ways this can go, depending on what you all decide you, as a group, what paths you take, shall we say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Oh, <laughs> we don't decide anything as a group. One of us <laughs> just goes and does something. Yeah. And oh, we yeah. are yeah. like, ah, uh, okay. Well, let's, let me rephrase that then. Depending on how you react to stuff that's happening, certain options may open and certain options may close to you let's just say that way for how this uh how, how the story concludes I'm, um, I'm fascinated to see how the parents in the mix right now will uh factor into things yeah because your mum and dad are just kind of hanging out in the back of the van right and um yep. obviously uh sora's mum walked into the house and we heard gunfire and we don't know what's going That's on it. there yet how does Anthony's dad react to that yeah i, I can't wait <laughs> is he all all bark no um bite yeah <laughs> or is he action man trying to get into the middle of this <laughs> we'll, we'll find out next time um okay well let's wrap this up then so uh i think let's tentatively say then so hopefully in two weeks time we'll be back with the next chapter keep an eye on our social media pages um for the rest of it check out our discord the the link is in, on our twitter page um we've got extra stuff there including the maps and things uh, you can find us on Twitter, w- including the link to that, at twitter.com slash pretendwithdice. Uh, we're also on Facebook, uh, although we don't tend to do so much stuff on Facebook. It's more just sort of when a new episodes go up, the links are on there. But feel free to like the page. It's also facebook.com slash pretendwithdice. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, you can always email us at pretendingwithdice at outlook.com. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll be back with the next chapter in two weeks which i guess will be thursday the 19th of march i don't think there's anything else we need to add yeah i don't know again i don't know if there'll be a bonus episode next week maybe maybe not depends i might do i might be able to get together a um a world building one but we'll see keep an eye on our social medias we're keeping it loose in march (laughs) (laughs) no concrete schedules in march (laughs) so uh so yeah like i say um Join the Discord, check us out on social medias and everything, and we'll see you in uh, maybe next week, maybe in two weeks. But um, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.